Okay, hello everyone. If, uh, if you could kindly make your way to your seats. So thank you all for coming today to the Spring Summit. Um, it's a pleasure to see you all. I'm Rory, Rory Battleday. I'm going to give the opening remarks. Um, and I'm the president of Thinking About Thinking, which is the nonprofit that puts on these summits and some conferences, which we're going to hear about in a second. Um, I know there was a little delay today on the road. I think a few people are, are going to be trickling in. I hope that's OK. Um, but without further ado, welcome to the summit. And I think many of you might be wondering, exactly what summit means. <laughs> and so when I think of summit, this is the first thing that comes into my mind. Um, and you know, in many ways, I think it's a good analogy for what we're going to go to today. You know, we're really aspiring. Um, the theory of machine learning, you know, that's something that really takes a lot of effort to get to. But perhaps from the top, with the right crowd or the right team, we can achieve clarity. Um, what I was initially inspired by is this idea of a summit on climate change, uh, which is, have been a very successful program with dealing with a large societal issue that affects us all. It's very complex and can be approached in different ways with different stakeholders. Um, and so my, the, our kind of aim with these quarterly summits is to begin to establish a tradition of doing the same. Um, and you know, maybe the fitting analogy that combines both of them is this kind of ancient idea of a forum, where people that were interested in the effects of a technology or were kind of contributing to its development would come together, would discuss these complex issues that would uh, affect the society at, at large, and make decisions based on them. Uh, and so here we go. Here's the forum. This is, these are the wonderful speakers that we have today, as well as um, the members of the audience. And I think that with these speakers and in this context, you know, I really hope that we can make some, um, some movement on fundamental open problems for AI, identify promising avenues to help overcome them, and kind of stimulate debate between some different people. So um, I've described what a summit is. What exactly are these fundamental challenges for AI? What do I mean by it? And I think I could mean a lot of things for a lot of different groups of people. So you know, on, on one hand, we've heard about a lot of successes recently in deep learning-based technology. Um, for example, from Google DeepMind, generating an algorithm called AlphaFold that can predict what a, the 3D structure of a protein is from its 1D structure, an incredible scientific innovation. Um, some people by AI might think of things like large language models and ChatGPT, which now a quarter of the world use. Um, this is a, a very recent technology that you know, has made its way into all of our lives and has you know, had many, many benefits and then has had some negative consequences. Um, and then some people, when you mention AI, might still uh, might think about the, the types of things that you see in science fiction. Um, so in films like Ex Machina, this kind of artificially aware agent with potentially superhuman intelligence. So what do I mean by it here? Well, I mean, this summit, um, at this summit, we are technical experts. That's our background. Um, that's where I think and feel we can make progress. And so um, this is a summit for the fundamental technical challenges for developing AI ML algorithms. Um, I think there should be summits for you know, lots of different other aspects of, of AI. And you know, I'd love to talk more if you're interested in arranging those types of things. And so what do I mean by that basically? I kind of mean that everyone that might be concerned with an equation like this. So this comes from Peter Norvig's definition, the kind of fundamental formula or problem of AI where um, you know, a, an artificially intelligent general agent should be looking to kind of take the, take the best action that leads to the most desirable outcome in the world and to learn that themselves, not without instruction. And so I apologize for putting an equation on the screen um, so early. There are actually very few mathematical um, letters or symbols in there. And what I think is beautiful about this is you can sort of decompose it into these different fields of machine learning, intelligence research, in a pleasing way. You know? so, um, and I should say, I took the slide from uh, Leo Wong and Gabriel Grand, who worked with Josh Tanabam at MIT, because I thought it was so good. Um, they took it from other people, and originally Norvig. So in this equation, there are things like planning. You know, we're trying to take the action that maximizes something, and we're trying to plan to recover that. Um, there's something about utility, the values, welfare, goals, morality of an agent. You know, the, this agent is learning 
um, about its environment and interacting with the environment there, and taking actions in its possible repertoire. And so this uh, kind of includes the idea of a world model. Um, in there, in the world model, in the decision over what to do, um, depends on the state the agent's in, perception. Um, and you know, this is an expectation because of the randomness inherent stochastic processes of the world and also the subjective um, uh, uncertainty of the agent itself. So we have probabilistic reasoning in there as well. Um, and then I think another kind of a more ends-oriented approach to fundamental technical challenges is thinking about can we develop algorithms that do things in a useful way um, in the real world? So object recognition, question answering, um, autonomous driving, and then you know, beating us all at computer games. Other, other technical challenges? You know, I think that's a very key question to ask very early on as well. And I think there, there have been overwhelming successes. That's mo mostly what we're going to focus on today, I think. But anyone in the industry has kind of become familiar with this idea of power law scaling, um, that in increasing the size of language models for the purpose of language modeling, let's say, um, to increase performance, you need to increase compute or data by a lot. It seems to be something we're okay with, um, but I know Jason Bartlett is in the room and who manages the finances for the sort of renewable energies of the Bay Area. They're thinking a lot about this type of problem. Is it okay that we need to double compute power to realize a 5% accuracy gain? I think that's something we need to be thinking about from a technical perspective. And you know, this is from the OpenAI chat GPT report. Actually, we have something like um, exponential scaling in power law space for more complex functions like planning. And so um, this is already on a log-log axis, and so it's a sort of double exponential. It's, it's an extremely worrying thing um, if you're thinking mathematically about developing AI. So how do we do better? Uh, well, we're going to hear about it from our keynotes. and that These are leaders of the field um, that will kind of direct our attention to what the technical challenges are, um, promising avenues. And the final panel, which, in which we have a group of very, very impressive experts um, who will be talking to each other and the crowd about the fundamental challenges, promising avenues from, from the cutting edge part of research. OK, and I think there's a, there's a difference now into how we approach questions like this and a reason for having something called a summit. And in the past, mostly people had been addressing these questions from academia, academic perspective. And all of us in the room have probably gone through an undergraduate degree, been involved with the academy in some way. We might even all say we are academics at heart. However, now there is a new landscape for AI research that includes these different stakeholder groups, including um, academia, but also tech, um, the nonprofit sector, uh, funders, and also startups. I mean, we're here in Silicon Valley. And th I think this. Uh, the idea of the summit being a forum really appeals to this as well. Even in these ancient times, the different groups of people would come to be represented and to make their needs known as well as you know, the different organizational opportunities for these types of institution to um, both identify and overcome fundamental challenges. So this is, um, this is a graph of the number of undergraduates taking computer science degrees. Um, in the United States, and that's in dark blue, and master's students in light blue. Um, the number is increasing and increasing and sort of just peaked 100,000 per year. People are really interested in AI and computer science at the moment. This, however, is a graph of the employer of new PhDs, uh, of, sorry, of graduating PhDs. And whereas before in the past, we can see that a lot of these went to academia and you know, the same number roughly to industry, what we've been seeing is with this increase in people going into computer science and, it's and the fields related to intelligence, like cognitive science, neuroscience, um, people are coming out of it at the other end and kind of the same, the same number are staying in academia, but overall more of, a, more of them are going into industry as a proportion. And then if we look at the affiliation of research teams building these AI developments, um, we can see this this very productive period of industrial development in the dark red, where more and more papers are coming from these different stakeholder groups. So, you know, I think that it's, it's a very real phenomenon. These are the ideas that have inspired a generation, the new generation of computer scientists coming from tech and applications. Um, you know, in the summit, can we get it 
some of the finer details. What exactly are the right organization opportunities um, that these different types of structure have to address problems? And I think an, uh, another thing for bringing people together is to try to work out how these different groups relate um, and how one as a researcher might go through them. Uh, and one thing on this graph that um, concerns me, you know, is like the, in the pink is the collaboration. The number of projects coming from collaboration um, has been decreasing. And I think that's really worrying. I think, you know, what we're trying to do with this summit and our events in general is put these people back in a room together to discuss the ideas behind um, AI research. So we're going to hear about these challenges first in Christian's panel, New Landscapes for AI Research, where he has a group of um, leaders from different new stakeholder groups with visions related to the sort of everything from the economics of AI research to the right problems for different institutions to solve. We're going to follow up with a panel um, that Felix is chairing on how does one as an individual AI researcher move between them in trying to craft your career. You know, these are very important choices that I think a lot of us have been facing at the moment. Okay, and so for our venue for the summit, which we've all made it to, you know, what finer an Acropolis than the Computer History Museum where, we've learnt, where we can you know, embed our discussions about the future and a perspective on the past. Um, and I think if you get a chance to walk around, I think it begins to be apparent that these different stakeholder groups have been here all along, just maybe behind, more behind the scenes than in previous days. Okay, so my nonprofit, Thinking About Thinking, many of the um, kind of organizers, founding members are here. We put on a series of these summits. So we had a, a really fun one in Boston um, in the fall. This is the spring. We'll have an annual convention in Rome, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. That's a pure neuroscience, um, artificial intelligence, cognitive science conference, where we're looking to make breakthroughs in the underlying mathematical frameworks. And um, in London at the end of July, we'll be at the Sainsbury Welcome Center, back in Boston, Tokyo, back here. So this is a kind of quarterly series. Um, I've introduced the summit. I'd like to thank our very generous sponsors, um, both at the organizational level, um, who've allowed this sort of thing to happen and continue to inject their enthusiasm and support. And in particular, for this event, Jack, Ziffer, and Presentient, who have been main sponsors and really allowed it to happen. Um, I'll talk more about uh, each of them later. So today, after this talk, um, I'm going to introduce Jay McLennan. We're very excited to hear from someone who's been a, a pioneer of AI research for many decades, um, really at the pinnacle of that first summit, the mountain. Um, there'll be this panel chaired by Christian on new landscapes, a coffee break where there'll also be snacks, um, the second panel, and then we're going to have a lunch from Basis Health. Um, we're going to hear more about them. This is sponsored by Just Ask a Question. And to just ask a question is um, an online search-based platform for mental health. And we're going to be hearing from Danny Gray later. It's very exciting. Um, Danny has the best data set in the world. He's looking for machine learning experts to think about how he might um, develop that further. OK, after lunch, we're going to hear from Professor Bin Yu. And Bin is going to talk about the, the other side of machine learning, which is data. You know, the data science, making sure the data sources that we train these models on are, um, are veridical, are stable, and you know, ac accurately represent the underlying world, the world model that we want them to learn. Um, we're going to have a challenge. We're going to have a panel on challenges for AI and biomedicine, which is you know, a really interesting use case of AI and how it brings with it its own set of um, constraints and opportunities. And then we're going to go on to have a Professor Sergey Levin is giving a keynote. Um, followed by another keynote from D. Yang from Stanford, and the final fundamental pa challenges panel. Okay, so hopefully everyone's got the Wi-Fi by now. It's the computer history guest Wi-Fi. Um, please, any queries that you have, you can go back out to the front desk. The volunteer team are fantastic, led by Nikolai and Page. They can take care of anything. Um, if you have a question, uh, just raise your hand, and the volunteers will bring you a microphone. So that's at the end of talks or during panels. Um, and the badges, which are going to arrive very shortly, I can see some of them just have, uh, they have your kind of stakeholder group on them already or a space for you to write that. So if you're an academic and interested in talking to people from the nonprofit sector, you can sort of ideally recognize that. So maybe at the coffee break, we can politely ask everyone to change out the temporary labels for the real name badges. Okay, so thank you all very much for coming. Um, I'd like to call Jay McClellan to the stage. Um, and uh, I can take any questions while I do that.